Ukraine has always been singing. Voices of joy and sorrow appeared on the Eurovision Song Contest regularly. But in general, singing during difficult times is the Ukrainian hallmark. The song Chervona Kalina was written as a battlefield song for Ukrainian Sechovistrilci troops fighting against communists more than a century ago. They knew they had no chances against bigger army. They were dying singing Chervona Kalina. Singing and laughing in the face of death gave the birth to many songs not so popular over the world, but still powerful. But the biggest worldwide support the singing nation received with the beginning of the Russian-Ukrainian war in 2022. Hello, I'm Ozzy Osbourne, this is my wife Sharon. We are standing up for Ukraine. Hey, I stand for Ukraine and I stand for freedom and I feel that the other governments in the world should do whatever they can to support Ukraine and give them whatever they need to be able to beat Putin back. The response of Ukrainians wasn't quiet as many artists took the gun and went to fight against occupiers. Some of them die in these fights. On the day of the final part of the Eurovision contest, in the battle near Izum, one more artist, Boma Gomelsky, was killed. So once again, Ukrainians are singing when dying. In that background, participating in the song contest was absolutely logical. And the appeal to Azovstal and Mariupol in the end. It was not political at all. Desperate hope, yes. Humanitarian and even cultural appeal. Among those warriors blocked in the Azov style, there is also an artist, a professional singer, Katerina, with a call sign Ptashka, a bird. She's 21 years old, she's paramedic, and her singing is louder than bombs. So simultaneously with the Eurovision Song Contest in Turin, the songs were allowed in Azovstal, Mariupol. There was not the regular victory of the band in the Song Contest, what is the least reason for any country to become popular. What was the most important in that show? That the world was singing together in unison. Intelligent Polish Christian Ochman, gentle Portuguese Maro, bright British Sam Ryder and many more. In different languages, in different melodies, the life itself was singing. And the next day, Russian occupiers started shelling Azovstal with the phosphorus bombs.